Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Handmade Hero, the show where we code a complete game live on stream on Twitch, no engines, no libraries, just us, and basically we're doing it old school, we're kicking it old school. We're doing it the way that you used to do it when you sat down in front of a computer and you're like, it's just me, um, and we're going to make this computer uh, do something awesome, right? That is what we do here, uh, and we're in sort of the middle of, uh, of uh, you know, a uh, sort of a, a big shift, I guess I would say. And I guess I want to I want to say yesterday I was expecting today to kind of be more in the middle of it as well. But yesterday we kind of just typed in all the stuff we had to do, and then we ran it, and it kind of almost worked perfectly. I think there were a couple things that weren't quite working right, and so we kind of lucked out. You know, some days you just you luck out, right? And so today, really, I think mostly we're just doing a little tune-up in there, and so we may be coming to the end. And the thing that we were working on was moving over to a unified asset file. So before we were loading bitmaps and uh, wave files off disk just randomly, uh, like you might do. Uh, and what I want to do is consolidate those so you could ship these little asset packs, uh, which were basically a bundle of an arbitrary number of assets in the game, and that would include their metadata, like when they should be used and that sort of stuff. Uh, and then the game would just look at all of the asset files that were in, you know, the, the sort of startup directory for the game, and it would merge all those together, and that would be the assets uh, for, that the game would run with, right? And so that's what uh, we did. And yesterday we showed how to sort of uh, change over to making, uh, we had a, our file APIs used to just read a whole file at a time. We changed over to making it so that you could read little pieces of the file. And so that's all done now. And so what we're gonna do is hop back in there because there was a couple things, I think with our, our the way asset numbering was lining up and there's a couple things, I think there's a couple little bugs in there. Uh, so even though we kind of, it kind of worked the first time we tried it, I think it's not quite working. Uh, and so we got to go in there and now do, you know, we ran out of time to even really step through it much in the debugger. So today what we're going to do is go back in there, uh, just kind of clean it out, all out, make sure we've got everything working the way we want. Uh, and then we can just move on to our second testing of it, which is I'd like to test having more than one asset file. Uh, so we'll go and we'll have, you know, our, um, we have a little thing that, that does a test, uh, write, writes out a asset file as a test. And so what we could do uh, is we could make that thing write out two separate asset files and you know make sure that the game can merge those two asset files together properly without making um, a mistake, right? And so that'd be the sort of the next logical thing on the horizon because we need to make sure that that's actually working. We wrote the code, but we don't know if it works till we actually run it. So today is day 153 on Handmade Hero. Day 152. Uh, is the source code, if you pre-ordered the game on handmadehero.org, day 152 is the source code uh, that you would want to unzip into your source code directory uh, if you wanted to be at the exact place in the code base that I'm at uh, when I start running right now, right? So I'm going to go ahead uh, and, and load it up here. Here we go, handmadehero.cpp. Uh, I'm going to do my little compile just to get things started. Uh, and where we left off, uh, you know, like I said, it looked to me like it wasn't quite right uh, because I ran the game, right? Um, and it sounded like, uh, <clears throat> oh, that's unusual. Well, okay, so maybe not. Maybe we've got a better, uh, oh, wait, no, that was, we knew that was there. That was there last time too, right? Yeah. Uh, that was sort of the indication that something was wrong, but it's not actually a, a, a crash or anything. That was actually just a, an assert that was like, hey, wait a minute, the asset count's wrong. Uh, but when we ran it, yeah, some things seemed to work correctly, like sound, you know, it's streaming the sound and playing the sounds correctly, um, yeah, and all of them seem to be there, you know, uh, and then we kind of have this weird thing, though, that, like, where are the shadows, right? Uh, I don't see the shadows. And so I think, you know, my, my guess before we didn't have a chance to really take a look at it, but my guess is that what's happening is when we loaded the asset files, we forget to account for the fact that asset zero is the null asset. So we actually, I think, are loading the, the shadow into the zero slot, which means that it, everything else still works correctly. But when, it, when you go, I want a shadow, it goes, oh, okay, here's the shadow handle. It gives you back asset handle zero. And you're like, oh, everybody knows that's the null asset. So it doesn't return anything, right? So I'm assuming that that's what's happening with our shadow, and that's why uh, we're in this situation where our shadows disappeared, but every, literally every last thing other than that 
uh, seems to be loading properly and identified properly, right? Like that's the head, that's the torso, that's the uh, legs, there's the other head, there's the other torso, there's all the ground patches, there's the trees, like every other bitmap seemed to come in and identify itself uh, properly. And so it's just a question of like, okay, you know, what's, what's going on, right? Uh, so that's my guess just having sort of when we, when we first ran it yesterday, that's what I was thinking in my head. Oh, we must have missed that. Uh, but I'm going to use that as an excuse, too, to kind of just take a quick look uh, again uh, at when we do test asset builder. Uh, what I want to do here is I want to kind of take a look and see when we did our asset file creation. You know, I don't really remember. I don't remember what we did with zero. Uh, I don't remember if we even really looked at that in the code. And so what I wanted to do is just kind of take a quick look uh, through it here and see what was supposed to happen in the asset file, right? Uh, and so what it looks like here, right, if you see it, it looks like it sets the asset count to one, which means it's going to leave space. Uh, the zero asset, uh, the zero, the asset index zero will actually be um, null. There won't be anything in there. And what I'm thinking, you know, in my head, I don't think that's a very good idea. I don't think it's a very good idea for the asset bundler to leave slot zero open. And the reason that I don't think that that's a good idea is because, um, I feel like the asset bundler doesn't need to leave those slots. Well, you know what, as I'm seeing that, I kind of take it, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm even taking it back because if things inside the asset file had to refer to, had to have a null pointer as well, they would need to do that. So maybe, you know what, maybe that should stay. And so what that means is that the first asset uh, in that file is gonna be the null asset. Uh, it's, it's gonna be a garbage entity, you know, a garbage asset uh, that should never be loaded. Uh, and so what we need to do in the handmade asset thing is we need to make sure that we're correctly expecting that, right? That we're doing uh, the right thing there and actually, you know, being aware of the fact that that, that zero entity is, is not in there and so on. So if you look at what we're doing here, um, if you look at what we're doing here, I think we can kind of see what the problem, I, I think we can kind of see what the problem is, right? So the asset count in the file, first of all, let's, let's talk about these problems one at a time. So first of all, we have this assertion. And the assertion is saying that the number of assets we actually processed out of the asset file was one less, we, when we looked at it, uh, it was one less than the asset count we were actually expecting, right? And we can sort of see exactly why that would be. Uh, we, we don't even really need to investigate further. We, we already know exactly what that would be. And the reason is because here's the asset count that we, that we count up at the beginning when we look at our HHA files, and we only have one of them. And that asset count here is going to be one plus the number of actual assets in the file because there's going to be that zero slot, right? So if there are 50 assets in the game, it's going to report 51, okay? Then what happens down here when we actually load them out, we only load out the assets that are actually invalid type uh, asset types, right? Because we're picking and we're, we're basically doing that asset merge and the asset merge never loads the null asset type. It never loads things with, that, that aren't in an asset type array. And that first asset is the null asset. It's not in an asset type array. So we're only going to load 50 assets total out of the file, even if there were 51 with the null asset, that null asset's never going to get touched, right? And so that uh, is the first thing that we would have to fix. The first thing we have to fix is when we increment the asset count, we're going to have to subtract one from the asset count in the file, right? And we're going to have to, oops, that's not to do, that's a note. Um, the first slot in every HHA uh, is a null asset reserved, right? Uh, so we don't count it as something we will need space for, right? Uh, so that's fine. And that way, so what I think we would have seen, let's say we had three HHH files, is our number at the end would have been off by three instead of off by one, because it'd be off by one for, for every file that we have, okay? And similarly up here, we kind of have the opposite problem. Here we're starting out at asset zero, but the problem is we actually want to be starting off at asset one, because we want to leave that null spot open, right? So we want to make sure that we have exactly one null rather than one null per file, which is what we were doing before, right? So we want to subtract one from the asset count here and start it at one here because that's what gives us the actual layout we want. One null total, no matter how many files there are. Okay, so that's thing one. Thing two 
is when we actually start loading the assets, right? When we actually start loading the assets, we have the problem of the asset count starts at zero, but really we need to reserve that for the null asset, right? Um, so what we need to do is we need to first make a null asset, right? So we want to basically make a null asset here uh, where we're going to take a look. I suppose we should actually just generate one where we do a zero struct. We're just going to say, you know what, that first asset, right? That if we're going to assets, um, asset uh, plus the asset count, right? Uh, we want to take that asset and we want to zero that out. Right? We want to take whatever that is and we want to just clear it so that if anyone actually ever looks at it, it's just a bunch of zeros. Uh, nobody really ever should look at it, but just so we know this is a zero, it's just blank in there. Right? And then we increment the asset count by one right? to make sure. So we want to do uh, note Casey, uh, reserve one null entity uh, at, uh, sorry, one null asset at the beginning. And I think that uh, will now align things properly uh, compared to what we were doing before. Uh, and hey, what do you know? Uh, the shadows are back uh, and we don't get that assertion anymore. Uh, so now I think we're in a little bit better shape to proceed because like I said, I think, you know, when I saw it, when I thought it come up, I was like, I kind of kind of think I know uh, roughly what's going on there. Uh, and, and that was clearly a problem, right? So now that we've got that, what I'd like to do is, like I said, I'd like to move on to testing to make sure because, you know, right now the code appears to be working, but we're only loading one HHA file. So for all we know, this asset merging might totally fall apart and break as soon as you actually have two files because all of the, all of the merging that's going to happen is really basic right now because it's all uh, loaded basically exactly, you know, it's, it's loaded essentially the exact same way as it was before. Um, and so some things about, oops, that's, that was a little, sometimes I put my palm accidentally on the little like part of the, the Wacom tablet that scrolls and it goes nuts, right? Got to, maybe I should disable that. I think I probably could disable that pretty easily, but anyway. Uh, so I feel like we have the exact same thing here with tags potentially. Uh, since we want to reserve a null tag, right? I think we want to do something like that. And since we were reserving a null tag in the file as well, I think the same is gonna, thing is gonna be true here, right? Um, so we want to send like the first uh, asset and tag slot uh, is a null, so we don't count it. That's something we need space for, right? So I think we want to do exactly the same things here. Uh, all again, all exactly the same stuff. Uh, and so that, that way, when we do the tag base, the tag base starts at one, right? Instead of starting at zero um, and, and is, is based from there up. Uh, and then similarly, when we come in here, right? And we do our tag count, uh, I want to do reserve one null tag at the beginning. Uh, I want to zero struct uh, the, that particular tag, right? And then I want to increment that tag count by one. Uh, and then, uh, well, you know what? That's actually not how the tag count works, I forgot. The tag count, I think, is actually already handled uh, up here, right? So, so that's, this, this part, is never actually used, right? Yeah. Uh, so really, I just want to do um, that. I just want to clear that uh, initial tag, right? Um, and that's fine. So we're gonna do it here. Uh, and the tag base has already been set up for us. So we don't have to worry about that. Um, so there we go. And I think that's all relatively good. Uh, that all seems pretty good. We can now get rid of this guy. This code is the old file test code that we had. Uh, we can get rid of that. Uh, and now, you know, we've got sort of our, our file stuff. It looks pretty good. Um, so let's go ahead and test that with the tags and make sure that the tags are still being aligned properly. Uh, oops, not at all, apparently. Uh, what did I do wrong there? Still got the asset tag count right. Still got the tag base right. Uh, we're still incrementing it. We do correctly account for that in the asset. Yes, we do. Uh, so that's all good. Um, but... Uh, asset tag zero, we are zeroing that struct, uh, which should be fine, right? Uh, and then we read them all into the tag base. So I don't know why that would be broken. Um, you know what, I do know why that would be broken now that I think about it. Um, 
So what I realize here is this is actually a little bit wrong, right? Because the number of tags is the tag count minus one, right? Uh, and in here, we're actually using the tag count regular. So what we really need to do is, you know, we need to skip the first tag, right? Uh, which would require us to do something like this, right? We want to load one less tag, right? And we want to read, like this is the thing um, that's reading it in. It's reading it into the correct place, right? Um, but we need to skip the first tag here uh, where we do file header tags, right? Uh, so where it's telling us to do it, we need to skip forward one tag to skip the null tag, right? So we're going to skip the first null tag since it's null. Then what's going to happen down here is when we're rebasing the tag, right? Uh, that tag base. Again, the tag base is not quite correct because the null tag is sort of a different tag than the other tags, right? The null tag is getting collapsed down. So what we really have to do is say if the asset HHA first tag index, right? If that equals zero, uh, then what we would want to do is just make sure that everyone actually equals zero, right? That everything's mapped to the null tag, right? Um, on the other hand, if it's not equal to zero, then what we want to do is move it up by the tag base. But again, we would move it up by the tag base minus one, right? Because we would want to move it up. We would want to move it up to its location, but minus that, you know, it's zero tag. And so again, this complexity comes from the fact that we, we don't want to duplicate the fact that there are many null tags when we do that shift up, right? Uh, yeah, so that's a little janky. Uh, oops, that's last tag index. So that's a little janky, but I'm not sure, like I, I have to think about it, uh, but I'm not sure there's a lot of ways to unjankify that because by, it, by its very nature, we're kind of merging these arrays. So there's gonna be some finicky um, kind of like handling of the edges of that. Uh, just by, you know, by its very nature, right? And so I feel like, uh, on the whole, that's probably fine. I'm not too worried about the fact that it's a little finicky. Again, it only really happens at load time, and it's something that's not too hard to verify and test uh, should we need to really, like, uh, take a, a more, you know, a careful look at it at some point. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and bop over to test asset builder here, and I'm going to try and figure out a good way that we can make something that splits this into two HHA files so that we can actually test to see whether it's working at all, right? Um, and so what you can see here is we've got this code that, that writes out the file. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and pull, I'm gonna try and extract uh, that part out so that I can do it more than once, right? Uh, so all I'm gonna do here, right, is I'm just gonna go ahead and, and uh, you know, extract that in the, in the most direct way, uh, you know, exactly how you would think. Um, again, uh, kind of doing, this is that compression oriented programming that I'm talking about. Here's something I have that I want to do. I want to do it twice. So I'm literally just pulling it out just at that time and making the thing that I can call twice, right? And I'm not doing anything more fancy than that. It's really, 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 really basic, right? Um, so this is a, a little right HHA. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, you know, make something like this where you pass it in a file name and then I'm going to replace, oops, I'm going to replace uh, that hard-coded file name with one in here that it can pass. So it can kind of say, okay, you know, now would be a good time uh, to write the HHA out. I want you to write it to this file, right? So we're going to have to pass in the assets because it's going to need something to write. Uh, so it's going to need, you know, this pointer here. So there we go. Uh, and then we'll see what compiler errors we have. Okay, we don't have any. So that, that's how we would write out an asset as a function call. And once I've got that, now I can uh, feel free to write more than one uh, HHA, right? I can write more than one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break these up into two separate, uh, you know, sort of blocks very arbitrarily. Uh, so I'm gonna have one here where I'm gonna say uh, write hero, right? And then I'm gonna have one here that's like write non-hero, right? Uh, and those are, are literally, they're, they're not going to take any parameters or anything. They're just going to be functions uh, that, that do that thing. Okay. And so here we go. I'm just going to cut out this code will be the same in both of them, basically just the little startup bit here. Right. Um, and uh, then this code will actually be unique. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and grab the stuff that's not the hero. Right. There's the non-hero. I'm going to put that in there. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I feel like the sounds are also uh, not the hero, right? Uh, so, so those maybe would go uh, in there. In fact, you know what? Let's just even, let's, let's get nuts. Let's get crazy here, people. Uh, just absolutely ludicrous. Because I remember someone one time, uh, I, I don't remember the circumstances, but I know uh, a week ago or a couple days ago or something, somebody asks, could you put all the sounds in one asset file, right? And so let's just do it. They wanted to see it, uh, let's do it, right? Uh, so there's all the sounds now and the music uh, will all come from a different asset file, okay? Uh, and so there we go. And so now I've got uh, these, all of these files separate. Uh, they're all gonna do their own, uh, their own little dance here, right? Um, and again, just total test code, uh, really nothing, nothing all that much to it. Now, you know, even, even as I say it though, you know, I mean, why not go a little bit further? It wouldn't take me much to do it. Uh, just something like initialize that takes a game assets, right? Something like this. If I want to, I can pull out this code. We've seen it a couple times. Uh, maybe it'd make my life a little bit easier. I don't really know. Um, but, uh, but there's something I can do if I want to, right? And now I can just say initialize uh, assets uh, like so, right? Um, and that's, you know, pretty straightforward. So maybe I'll do that. And that way I know that this code is always kind of getting initialized the same way each time, uh, which is, you know, again, not really, not really a big deal in this particular case, but uh, can't hurt. So let's go up in here and uh, make this be test three, right? This is gonna be test two, uh, and this is gonna be test one. And then I'll do those files. I'll do write hero, you know, write non-hero, write sounds, something like this. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and compile those. Now, if I uh, take a look, so if I go to the handmade, uh, right, uh, data directory. Um, and I'm not sure, do we have any global variables as well? I don't know if we do, I don't think we did. Just, I, I don't think so. So really we won't, we, that, that's it in terms of making it happen multiple times. I don't think we need to do anything else. Um, so if I go in here and I look, I got that test.hha, I'm gonna delete that, right? I'm gonna make get rid of that. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and, and just run this code, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and run the test uh, asset builder. Uh, I'm gonna let it do whatever it's gonna do. Um, and there you can kind of see the output of it. It's got test one, test two, uh, and test three. Now we have no idea if that uh, did what we wanted, right? We have no idea. Uh, but what we can do is we can kind of go look now and see if we can load those files successfully, and then we can see whether we can merge them successfully. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm not even really gonna do the first test. Uh, what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna just try loading just one of them, right? And so now what we should see we hope, right, if we've done this correctly, is we should see the things that are in that file show up, uh, but not any of the other things, right? So our asset system will just uh, find that it can't actually uh, load any of those other things. It'll only be able to load the ones from the first file, right? And so what are the things in the first file? If we take a look at what's in there, right, we've got the hero, the, the cape, the head, the cape, and the torso of the hero in all four directions. So what I expect to see is the hero and the familiar, the torso, the monstar, those will all show up. Their shadows won't, the environment won't show up. Um, and uh, that, that's what I'm expecting to see, right? And that's exactly what I saw, so that's good. Uh, so the, the file writing is still working properly. Uh, again, we can test each individual file that way. Here's uh, test2.hha. Uh, we'll go ahead and, and load that. And so, okay, we've got some kind of a problem here. Um, not sure exactly what it is. But it looks like um, it looks like the asset count is somehow wrong. Like there's more assets in the file than it than it counted total, right? Um, am I right? Yeah. All right. So that's on test two and test three, same thing. So it looks like only on test one.hha, which is the first one written, which is rather suspicious, right? Uh, in fact, uh, just how suspicious is it, <laughs> right? Uh, to, to see just how suspicious it is, we could also do this, 
right? Uh, and if I run uh, the test asset builder again, so that it's written them out in a different order now, um, let's see if test two is still the problem or if test two has magically been fixed uh, by our order reversal. Hey, look at that. Uh, so that's very suspicious and it says to me that we've got something that we didn't quite uh, initialize properly, right? Um, because the order shouldn't matter. If the file is going to be wrong, it should be wrong. Uh, but obviously I didn't quite uh, extract that code quite correctly, so I'm going to go figure out why not, right? So let's take a look. Uh, in the assets, what have we got? Uh, we've got the tag count, we're initializing that, we've got the asset type count, not initialized. So there you go, very simple. Uh, and by the way, I've said this a couple of times before, um, I've, I've said many times before, one thing I like to do in a lot of my production code is if there's no reason not to do it, I will always initialize everything to zero, always. Uh, and the reason is because uninitialized variables are very common in programming and they're a very easy mistake to make. Um, in this particular case, right, it doesn't look particularly harmful. Uh, actually, that's zero there. It doesn't look particularly harmful or anything, right? It, it, it seems kind of harmless. I found that error, you know, right away or whatever, and it's not that big a deal, right? But other times it can be much more subtle, right? Other times those uninitialized variable bugs can, you know, can come back to haunt you. And so rather than relying on having to actually manually initialize things and remember that you actually manually initialized uh, all your stuff, right? Uh, I, I actually vastly prefer if there's, if you don't have to worry about the speed implications of it in particular case, I highly recommend clear to zero because clear to zero solves all those problems uh, and is uh, pretty cheap. You know, it's, it's pretty darn cheap. Uh, so I do a lot of that. Um, in fact, at work, uh, my version of the arena stuff that we do in here, uh, where we do push array and all those sorts of things, uh, I actually pass flags uh, to these things. And one of the flags is clear to zero and I pass it often. So I just like, when I push new memory, I just, it gets cleared to zero, right? Because that's a really easy way to avoid having those kind of bugs in cases where you don't care about uh, the extra time uh, spent on that, right? So let's go ahead and run that again. Uh, let's see if my hypothesis was correct. Uh, looks like it was. Um, let's go ahead and try to load uh, the third file now as well. So I'll uh, switch back here, go to test three. Uh, uh oh, was it, did I not do it correctly? I thought I did. Did I not initialize the, the output type properly? What happened? I initialized everything. That's all we got, right? Do we have anything else? Do I count on one of these? Uh, let's see, asset count is one, asset type count. I am I right about the asset type count? Uh, or is asset type count also need to be set to one? Uh, oh, that's interesting. Asset type count. Oh, so actually that wasn't really a bug. I take it back. Although we should probably initialize that because it's kind of bad not to, I would suspect. Uh, it turns out that's actually not relevant. Okay, so the real bug is not clearing the asset types array, probably. I would suspect, right? This value was irrelevant. It just wasn't, wasn't relevant at all. Uh, so what we probably want to do is something more like this, where we say, okay, there is asset count number of asset types, right? That's just how many there are. Uh, and what we want to do is clear out those HHA asset types so they're set to zero, zero for every asset type that we don't touch, right? So we actually need to initialize this entire array, uh, which again, is not really a huge deal, but it's something where, you know, we probably should do it. Again, this, we're using the C runtime library in our external tools. So test asset builder doesn't get built in. So, you know, I'm fine with calling memset in here, just kind of like we're fine using the printf and all that sort of stuff uh, in here. Uh, so we can go ahead and do that. Um, it's this asset types uh, situation, right? Uh, and the size of that is going to just be the size, you know, of the, of the whole array, right? I want the whole thing cleared uh, to zero. Uh, 
right? And I've got to pound include. Uh, I don't know where that's at. I assume it's a memory.h, but I don't really remember. Yeah. Uh, so let's try that one more time. Write that out uh, and run it. Uh, there we go. Um, so now we're, we've taken care of our uninitialized portion for the test asset builder. Again, we don't really care about that code. It's irrelevant code. It's just for testing, but you know, we have to make it work well enough to actually do our tests, right? Uh, so it's worth debugging it <laughs> at least to the point where we can use it. Uh, not worth worrying about it much more after that. So now let's see about merging. Again, uh, before we implement this uh, Win32 side of things, let's do a cheese version where we just force it to do exactly what we want to do in this case. Uh, and so what I'm gonna go ahead and do there is say, all right, uh, the file name, right? Uh, I'm just gonna do a simple thing where I say, uh, if the file index equals zero, uh, then the file name equals one thing, right? Something like this, else if, right? Else if. Uh, something like that, or invalid.hha, uh, something like this, right? So if the other is zero, we'll load the first one. If it's one, we'll load the second one. If it's two, uh, we'll load the third one. Uh, and now we'll load all three. And now we can go, you know, debug our merging code, which, you know, like I said, we have not had a chance to test yet. So this uh, will be our way of debugging that code, uh, right? Um, so at first blush, it appears that everything just kind of worked. So maybe the merging code doesn't have any bugs in it um, or none that, that are sort of evinced by this, but I don't really know. Uh, oh dear. That does not look good. In our load sound call. Oh my. Well, okay, so we definitely do have some kind of bug in our loading code and it's in the sound stuff. Because you can see what happened here. Um, somebody got back an ID that's wildly invalid. So our asset file thought that there was a valid, uh, you know, a valid uh, ID out in the middle of nowhere, right? Um, I mean, there's no, we don't have anywhere near that number of assets, so that can't possibly be uh, a valid ID. It's happening inside the prefetch sound code. Uh, so in here, that info, uh, where we have that info, next ID to play, you can see that that's just garbage, right? It's just totally um, uh, and completely wrong. Since we know that was the music, uh, basically we know that we're either setting or adjusting those uh, assets incorrectly. Uh, so let's think about that. Um, you know what, that's a good point. So when we merge the assets in, we are not updating that thing one, uh, but thing two is that's so far out of bounds, I'm not sure uh, that, that we, I mean, I wonder if we were even setting that, I think probably we weren't. Uh, so when we create, create one of these assets, right, I wonder if we weren't, when we create a sound asset, if we weren't initializing uh, that properly or not. So in here, it looks like we are, right? It looks like h sound next id to play dot value. Uh, that looks like we are initializing the sound properly. Um, and if we go look down here, when we're actually adding it in, when I look at this, uh, kind of feels like that should have been correct. So I'm not sure where that really bogus number um, is coming from. So we're gonna have to do a little more forensics on that. But one thing that I did wanna point out is when we load our asset files, uh, that is actually something uh, that's going to be a little bit uh, difficult for us, right? Because next ID to play uh, for those for the sounds, right? That value we don't know how to remap that value, right? Oh, and now that I think about it, that's probably exactly what's happening. Even so, if you think about it, this is this is actually probably exactly what's happening, uh, and why we're getting the bogus value. So it is probably the exact problem that I was just saying. So here's what happens, right? We rebased our tags. So we know that the tags are correct. So basically when we have, you know, multiple files uh, in each one of them, so we have these tag arrays. Uh, when we merge these tag arrays, where this, you know, this used to be tag zero, that used to be tag zero, this used to be tag zero, right? 
And now they've all got, you know, all the tag zeros mapped to here, right? This used to be tag one, tag one, tag one. Now tag one of this one maps to here. Tag one of this one maps to like tag 17, you know, tag one of this one maps to tag 35 or whatever, right? Now that we're doing that remapping for the tags, uh, we know that our assets all point to the right tag. So if some asset, you know, if an asset here uh, was pointing to this particular part of the tag table, um, and then another asset here was pointing to this part of this tag table, right? They mo might both be pointing to tag two. This guy, when it gets merged, will still be pointing to tag two, but this guy should be pointing to tag 18 now, right? So we have to remap uh, that and we're doing it. What we're not doing, however, is in the assets. What if an asset points to another asset? We really don't have any of that except for one place, which is the next sound ID. So what will happen there is the first time we play a sound that has one of those, right, uh, that came from a file which got, re you know, w when the things got rearranged, the first one will be fine, but its next pointer, right? Uh, I mean, if you think about how this worked, in the file maybe, right, they looked like this. Uh, so I had, you know, uh, sound zero, and it pointed, you know, to sound one, uh, and it pointed to sound two, you know, like so. Uh, those now have to be remapped so they can kind of jump, you know, so they can uh, be correct because when we re remap these, right, and this is, you know, if this is slot 0, slot 1, slot 2, or actually it would be more like, you know, let's say this is slot 16, 15, uh, 17, 18, this pointer is going to be 16, this pointer is going to be 17, right? or I should say, this pointer is going to be 17, this pointer is going to be 16, or 18, right? So 16 points to 17, 17 points to 18, right? When we remap these, they may get loaded into some part of the asset array way down here, right? And now this asset is asset 237. Well, if it's pointing to asset 17 still, it's going to point way back to some totally different asset that's not even a sound, potentially. It could be like a bitmap, right? Or it could be to some other totally different sound, right? And we'd have no, it'd be totally wrong. And so we need to remap those pointers, otherwise we'll load garbage, which is exactly what we saw where the next ID to play was some garbage value. That was probably like the bitmap width or something or, or uh, the floating point alignment for the bitmap or something, right? Um, so that's just a garbage thing. So what we need to do when we load these in is we need a way of, of translating where the assets are trying to point to uh, so that we can make sure that they actually exist in the right places, right? Um, so yeah. So we know they're all inside the same uh, asset class, right? And we do know what the base of the asset class actually is. Uh, so when we come in here and we say asset count for type one pass last asset minus first asset index, source type first asset index is telling us sort of the base of these guys, right? So if I were to take whatever that, you know, that next pointer actually was, right? And, and do the rebasing on it, uh, that, would, that would do the trick. The problem here is, again, do, we don't actually know what kind of an asset it is, right? We don't know uh, whether it's sound or music at this point. And again, I don't think that's something that we ever actually stored. So knowing how to remap it is actually kind of tricky. Um, because in order to know whether to remap it, Oh, well, you know what? I take it back. We kind of do know. We actually do still know. Because what we do know um, is in the asset type ID, right? Where we've got like asset tag, asset type ID, that stuff. In this, in this, we do know that everything above a certain place is sounds, right? You know what I'm saying to you? Uh, so we actually do have the ability to say something like, oh, okay, you know, uh, asset first sound, uh, something like this, right? Uh, and then we can do something like this. I guess we don't even care if there's empty stuff in the tree. We could even just do it like that, right? Uh, and so we can do something like this where we say, oh, okay, the, it's bracketed. So we actually know where the sounds are. And then we could always determine whether something with a sound just by doing a simple inequality check, right? Uh, I could pretty truly say, is this a sound by just going, is it in between here and here? And then I still wouldn't have to store whether the thing was a sound or not, right? So what I could do is say, oh, all right, 
you know, at the end of this, I could say if is sound uh, and pass it the uh, that that asset index, right? Uh, so basically, is is uh, um, I'm not the asset index, the asset type, right? Uh, so which one is it? It's uh, source index, like so, right? Uh, basically, if this is a sound type, right? If uh, if this is a sound type, uh, then I know I have to remap it. So I, ha I know I have to take HHA sound dot next ID to play. And that next ID to play has to be set uh, to be the correct value for the offset. So I know that its current value, right, like so. Uh, oops, did that subtract in the wrong direction, right? Uh, I know that's its offset from its base. And now what I need to do is say, okay, now I need to make it the offset from our base, uh, wherever that's going to be, right? Um, because I know that that's where it will load, right? So I know that, that uh, all of the things in my asset type are going to get loaded together. Uh, so I know that, that uh, you know, I can, I can remap it that way. Now, it's a, it's a little cheesy because it means that you couldn't have an asset in one class have its next ID to play be an asset in another class, right? That, that would be a limitation of this style of remapping. Whereas I could do something more ridiculous. In fact, maybe I'll do it more ridiculous just so you can see, uh, instead of doing the remapping uh, sort of in that tricky way. Uh, maybe I'll just do something like uh, asset remapping table uh, like that. And so what we would need to do now is make an asset remapping table that remaps uh, one type of asset uh, to the other. And so as we come uh, through here, right, uh, what I would do is say, okay, there's you know, going to be uh, one of these per file. Uh, so as we go through the file uh, and we load out the individual assets, uh, we have a remapping table that tells us where they go, right? And I could totally, you know, I can totally do that. Although it's easy to write, I'm just thinking about it like, man, I'm introducing this whole other table lookup thing that has to ha ah. I'm not happy. I I'm not happy about this. Let me just tell you, I want to tell you, from me to you, I'm not happy about it. I don't love it, right? I don't really like that, uh, that aspect of it. I don't like the fact that the next idea to play is so janky in terms of how it gets remapped. And I'm wondering whether uh, we want to introduce some kind of a shorthand uh, that's going to make it cleaner. So for example, if we wanted next ID to play uh, to be something, you know, something a little bit more special purpose, right? So if it was just for doing streaming music and looping, that's all it did. Uh, we could do this a lot more cleanly, right? And so since I don't know of anything really that we're going to do with it, besides those things, what I'm kind of thinking is that I should take a step back and say, don't bother introducing this whole remapping thing when we don't have assets that really need to reference other assets. Uh, you know, wait till there's some real reason why we want that feature. And instead, make next ID to play be a little bit different, right? Just change uh, the way that that code works so that it doesn't have to be remapped. Um, and that means we also wouldn't have to do this, right? And that seems better to me. And so the way we would do that, right, is we would go, okay, inside the file format, Instead of storing next ID to play, uh, we would do something like, you know, uh, enum HHA sound, uh, sound operation is probably wrong, but sound chain, something like this. Uh, and we'd have like HHA sound chain uh, underscore none. We'd have underscore loop and we'd have underscore advance, right? And that's all we'd have. Uh, and then this right here would just be one of those where we said, okay, uh, this is gonna be some value from HHA sound chain. And that value is gonna tell us what we should do. Uh, and so that's gonna be like, you know, chain. So then what we do is we say, okay, uh, by default, uh, chain is gonna be equal to none. So, you know, our sounds by default will not, will just play and stop. Uh, and then what we do here is uh, when we actually do these sounds, we won't have to store the last music value uh, or anything like that, right? 
all we have to do is say, uh, in general, if this is not the last sample, right? So if first sample index is not equal to uh, total music, uh, I guess what I would, I, it's a little bit tricky here because it's going to be added to music chunk. So I guess what I'd do is I'd say, all right, uh, if, if first sample index plus one music chunk um, is still less than, right? If it's still less than it, uh, then I know it's going to have to do its advanced thing. Uh, so what we're going to do is say this music uh, dot value sound chain is going to be equal to um, advance, right? So go, you know, play the next uh, sound, right? Uh, and that's it. That's all we, I think we would really have to do. Oops, this music. And we just modify the mixer to understand what that means, right? So what it's going to do is it's going to say, okay, if the info uh, says that the chain uh, sound.chain Oh wait, we don't have to do sound.chain, it's just info chain. If the info says uh, that we have to chain this sound, uh, then uh, what we'll do is we'll just know that we increment, we go to the next one, right? So if it tells us to advance, we just always play the next one. So all of the music chunks exist sequentially uh, in the fi file, right? So we just do prefetch sound, um, whatever our playing sound ID was, right? Playing sound ID. Uh, we would just say, you know what, uh, sound chain advance, uh, or, or get next sound uh, in chain. In fact, you know what we would do, what we'd really do, uh, is we'd actually just, just do exactly that. We wouldn't even do the if, uh, we would just do that. We'd do prefetch sound, get next sound in chain, uh, and we'd have that next ID to, uh, to play, it would not be there. We'd just say, here's the sound info. Uh, for this thing. In fact, I don't even know, do we need the info for anything else? Uh, yeah, we only kind of do it there, right? So what we'd really do, probably even condensing this further, is next sound in chain. Uh, we'd just ask it, what's the next sound in chain for this sound? Right? Um, and this will be, you know, something that we put in the other thing. And then we will prefetch that, the next sound in chain. This will move over into our asset system. Like so, uh, this might be an inline. It'd be pretty simple. Uh, so yeah, we'll make a call. We'll make a call to the thing called get next sound in chain, uh, and that would take uh, probably the game assets as well, because it needs to do that query, right? Uh, so it needs to take the assets. So do get next sound in chain. It'll prefetch that sound, and then later it's got uh, next sound in chain down here, um, and so what it can do is when it comes down here and says, you know, next idea to play, it'll just use next uh, sounded chain, right? Uh, and it'll advance to that. Okay? Uh, and so that's pretty straightforward, right? And so the only thing we think we really need to do now is just fix, uh, you know, fix this guy here. So he's going to return a sound ID. Uh, what it's going to do is it's going to take a sound ID in uh, and it's going to say, all right, let's get the sound info of that ID, whatever that ID is. Uh, let's assume, I guess what we could do is assume that the result is going to be nothing, so that there is, isn't, it's a, there's no sound that follows it. Uh, we'll go ahead and ask uh, if the ID we got passed is even valid, right? Uh, we go ahead and get the sound ID out. Uh, in fact, I guess we don't really have to do that, because when we call get sound info, we'll just get the null one back if it was null, so that's actually probably fine. So we get the sound info. Uh, we then uh, just do an if, right, on the info. So we say, well, I guess we could even do a switch, uh, where we say info uh, chain, and then we handle our cases, right? We just handle those cases uh, that we had up here, uh, like so. So assuming it's none, nothing to do, it's all good. Assuming it's loop, uh, we're going to return the same sound that we have. And assuming it's advance, uh, we're going to return uh, the result dot value equals ID dot value plus one. Just move it one forward, right? Uh, and we, do we have an invalid code path here, a valid default case? Uh, so I think that's more what we want. 
uh, because now we don't have to get in the asset remapping business. It's just loads and works, right? Uh, and so let's debug that. Let's make sure we don't have uh, more problems in there that I've created by sort of what I've been doing. Um, let's take a look. Uh, oh dear. Oh, right. These are not going to be set correctly because we have to rerun the exporter since we chained the data definition there, right? Um, so let's go ahead and run it. All right, um, so that's better. Uh, and now that's, you know, we've, we've sort of gotten that problem out with the remapping and we just don't have to worry about it. So I think that's good. I think that's where we want to be. I didn't like the direction it was going with having to remap the uh, entities because I felt like we would be doing a lot of uh, bookkeeping there for potentially not a lot of wins. So I would like to see more asset file referencing of, of assets between assets uh, before I would say that that's a good way to go. It seemed like just a lot of work that didn't need to happen, right? So I'm glad we got rid of that. That's much better. Um, all right, so I think that's probably a good stopping point. We only have two minutes left uh, in the stream anyway, so I'll go to the QA a little bit early uh, since I don't know that there's anything that I really want to start on right now because the next thing uh, that I'd like to do is to sort of you know, take a take a step back and just go in and go, all right, let's go ahead and actually implement uh, this stuff that actually gets us the, the file, all of the files uh, of this type in Win32, right? Uh, which is, you know, again, uh, something that we're going to have to, uh, going to have to write new. You guys haven't really seen me do any stuff like that in Win32 before. And so I want kind of want that to be uh, handled properly. So, all right. Uh, that is it. I will go ahead and start the Q&A uh, going. Uh, if you have questions about what we did on the stream, please prefix them with Q colon so I can see them uh, because I filter out the questions so that you know people who are trying to talk about something else on the stream can go ahead and do that and so that I can see the questions that uh, people are asking and answer them. So please put a Q colon in front of it, uh, and then I can check it out. Duckbill Phil, can we do advanced and then looped sounds? Yeah, I mean, every sound has that value set separately on it, right? So you can do whatever you want, right? There's no restrictions on, on that. Um, I mean, you, you could, you know, if you were just sitting down and going, I don't have any reason for it, I'm just gonna start playing with this because I'm interested, right? Which by the way, you know, is not something I super do that much these days because I'm a production programmer, so I tend to focus on what's going to be a valuable thing for me to implement for this game, right? But when you're first learning, that's not such a good mindset to have. Playing around with things is good and valuable, right? Because it helps you learn. And so you could imagine doing some more things here if you just wanted to sort of how much functionality could we get out of this thing. And so one example is you could change chain uh, to be something a little more specific. You could change chain to be like, instead of a U32, you could have it be two U16s. One that's like a command, like none loop in advance, and one that's a counter. And so if you set it to loop, you could set the loop counter to something. And then in the sound playing code, it would count how many times it played the sound with the same ID, right? So every time it, it hits down here, uh, and does it is valid next sound chain, it would go if playing sound equals next sound, Right? If, if these two things were already equal, increment the loop counter and check the info for this sounds loop count. And if I'm above that loop count, then advance, right? Um, so you could actually have inserted multiple loops uh, in, and then advances. So advance, advance, loop, loop, advance, loop, 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 advance, right? You could make, just with that one thing, you could make these pretty crazy series of things you did, right? I just don't know that there's any real reason you'd ever want that. Um, but you know, if you're just kind of looking to program, 
uh, for fun, uh, it, it's, it's fine, right? If you're doing the ID value plus equals one, won't you eventually loop off the last sound asset? Uh, well, the idea is that um, that would be a bug in the asset build, because if you notice what I did here is I only set it to advance if there are more to play. If it's the last one, I set it to none, so it will end. So the idea is you set advance, 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 end. And so when it gets to the end, it's no longer going to keep trying. But we can let it run. Um... Someone was actually saying that we had a separate bug uh, on the forums that we haven't had a chance to debug yet. And so actually, I kind of need to do this for another reason, which is we should have a, an actual different bug, an assertion uh, they were saying they get if you just let it run for a while. Um, although actually, you know what? They said that you had to, that it, it reproed better um, if you did it with the chipmunk version. Uh, so, so I think, uh, if we do this version where it plays fast. Yeah, so let's let that go because we have another bug to catch as well, potentially. Not a question, but Abner's internet will be out for another two days. Oh no, what happened to Abner? What happened to his internet? That's unfortunate. I didn't realize. That's too bad. Can I watch when you first started writing this game? Uh, yes, you can go to handmadehero.org and click on video archive. There it is. So this is the assertion. Um, and, and basically what it was is you can see it's not, the, the things don't quite line up, right? Uh, it's just barely under. Right, uh, and we kind of fixed these. So we still have a bug. I don't know if I should debug it now because technically this is the Q and A, and I don't know that I'm really supposed to be doing it. But it doesn't look like there's really any questions that are on topic. So uh, let me just take a quick look at it. So basically, what we're looking at here is our samples played uh, is, is getting set to end sample position, but end sample position is actually not actually off the end of the samples, right? Um, it's a little bit short, right? It ends, it ends just a little bit short. Uh, it's, and so I wonder what So let's take a look here. End sample position. Yeah, this does look kind of a little float precision-y. So we were going off of chunks to mix. And when we do our computation, right, we said the total chunks to mix you know, versus the chunks to mix at the, at the head end was, was 309 or whatever. I don't know what the actual number would have been uh, because it gets overwritten by other things. Something probably clipped it where we did the rounding, right? Where we said, oh, okay, the number of chunks we're meeting in sound, you know, we, we, we did sort of our clipping. And I'm guessing that if we actually go do the math out for this, we're going to see that that's too sloppy to actually guarantee that we're always going to end at the correct number. We may be off by a little bit, right? Uh, and it, it's not going to actually matter, right? Like we can keep going and it's fine, uh, but it's a little glitchy. So I think we might want to set aside a day to kind of go through and maybe clean up how we're doing this whole chunk counting thing to make sure that we're you know, doing it in the way that's as robust as possible so that we don't have to, because like trying to get that stuff to always line up properly seems error prone to me. Right? And this is going to be exact, this is, right? And it's only going to really happen on pitch shifted sounds, uh, but we're going to have plenty of pitch shifted sounds. Right. Does, it only, does, does it happen only when I do the volume or is it? Uh, 
Um, so anyway, though, case in point, right, you can see the sound ends properly, uh, so we don't have that problem. But we still have plenty of bugs left in our sound that we really should go back and fix. There's something with the, when we moved over to the asset file stuff, we introduced a little glitch at the end as well. Uh, so we just have some stuff that we need to, we need to kind of go through that sound loop one more time. It's not quite as robust as it needs to be, and we need to double check that we're writing out the ends of our sounds properly as well. Sorry for not related to this stream, but what is the next thing you have planned after assets? Um, I, I probably will will try to tackle. Uh, we'll either well we only have two things, two big things on the to do list uh, at the moment before moving on to game code, uh, which is uh, like the we have the debug code, like debug annotation and being able to draw debug stuff and you know debug readouts, HUDs, that sort of stuff. So debug code, debug infrastructure. It's, it's about time we did that. We've got enough complexity in the game now that it, you know, would, it would be helpful uh, to have that infrastructure and lighting. So those are, those are the only really two big tech features uh, that we don't have. Uh, and so once those, you know, we got to go do those two. And once we have those two in, then we can kind of do an, some passes on th just kind of clean things out, fix some of the busted things, um, you know, just kind of solidify stuff a bit and we'll be you know, we'll, we'll be pretty ready to sign off on the engine in terms of like, this is ready to start prototyping the game, you know, ready to start, um, start writing uh, whatever we want for the actual, you know, intro of the game and the, you know, how we're generating the maps and how you're, how the combat works and, and all that sort of stuff. How do you determine whether to fix a bug or keep moving forward? Um, so, you know, the, the actual answer to that question is not exactly what I show on the stream. And the reason for that is because I have to bucket this into educational chunks. The answer is you fix a bug immediately, always, always. So when you are doing production programming, you fix a bug always immediately right now. And the only time that you don't fix a bug is if A, it's in code that you are in the process of deleting. So there's no point in fixing it because you're deleting the whole thing or B, you're in the process of fixing a different bug so that you can't really go debug that bug, right? There is no other circumstance where you don't fix the bug immediately. You always fix the bug immediately. So if you find it, you go fix it. That's definitely the rule. Um, and if you're not gonna do that, you had better be pretty darn sure that you're not gonna use the code that the bug is in, uh, that you're just gonna delete it, right? That's my opinion. Uh, so I don't really leave bugs sitting at all. I never move forward past the bug. Uh, and so on the stream, the reason I have to do that sometimes is because I need to try to bucket things into one hour educational pieces. And I don't have the luxury of always doing the thing that would be the best programming practice. I try to as much as possible show the best programming practice because that's what the stream's about. But I do have to do things where like, okay, you know, normally I'd go take a look at X now, but I'm kind of going to not necessarily do that because it'd be really inconvenient to do so in terms of where the streams line up. Uh, but yeah, so the sound code has uh, a bug in it, I'm sure. And so I would like to go uh, spend a day debugging that, uh, well, a day, one of our hours, right, debugging that. Um, but, you know, I'm trying to teach you this thing and I don't want everyone to forget what I'm teaching you about the asset code when I go do that code, right? So I kind of have to make some concessions to the educational nature of this project. Uh, that are not necessarily exactly how I would have done it uh, if, you know, if I were doing it completely alone. If I decide to go for a PhD or something in the future, will you give me the blessing to write about compression-oriented programming? You don't really need my blessing, you know? Compression-oriented programming is a thing I would like people to do. And so I'm happy to hear that people would be writing about it. Uh, I would like more people to do it. So... Any other Q colons or, or not?
Looks like not. All right. Uh, then I'm going to wind us down here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove this 1.9, uh, but I'm going to say, uh, well, you know what I'll do? I'll do something more like this. Uh, I'll do to do Casey if you use the 1.9 uh, version. Uh, there, it, it can clearly repro a bug in the accuracy of the sample played calcs. Uh, so yeah, I have a feeling the problem is that this really wants to be a ceiling because we allow you to play over. And so I feel like we're, act I feel like it's really just, our math is just wrong. Uh, and so I feel like when we, if we go through there and, and do a little more of a fine tooth comb approach, uh, we can fix that in, in, a, in a much cleaner way. All right. Okay. Uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look at where we are at. Okay. File save. All right, thank you everyone for joining me for another episode of Handmade Hero. It's been a pleasure coding with you as always. If you would like to follow along at home with the source code, you always can. It's at handmadehero.org. You can pre-order the game uh, and it comes with the source code the whole time. So right from you know the very first episode, you can download the source code uh, and you can play around with it. And it's a good way to learn if you're trying to learn programming or you just want to play around, experiment with some of the ideas that we're doing on Handmade Hero, you can, uh, you can do that. We also have a forum site. You can go to catch up on old episodes. There's an annotated episode guide there. There's a forum you can ask questions. There's ports to Mac and Linux that the community has done. So if you're trying to follow along one of those platforms in advance of us porting to it, you can check those out. We have a Patreon page. If you want to support the video series, uh, that's the place to do it. Uh, and we also have a tweet bot that tweets the schedule. So if you're trying to catch us live, you can check the tweet bot. Uh, I will be speaking this Thursday at the Intel Buzz Workshop in Seattle. So if you do want to stop by uh, and check that out, and say hi, that's where I'll be. Um, it's, a, it's a low cost event for the community. Uh, Intel basically, you know, I think they, the tickets are free for people who register early and they're only like 20 bucks or something for people uh, who register late. Uh, so it's actually, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of just something they do for community outreach and it's pretty cool. Uh, so check that out. Um, I don't actually know what the web address is, but uh, Intel Buzz Workshop, right? Um, Seattle. So uh, that's the old one. Of course, they didn't. <laughs> this one. This is actually it. Seattle Intel Buzz Workshop at bemyapp.com, right? It's it's, uh, it's here. Uh, and so this is this is the actual thing. Uh, I don't know if they've actually fixed the speaker thing yet uh, to actually list me. No, they did. It's right there. Uh, and so that's that's where that's at. Thursday uh, at the at Impact Hub, which is this thing down downtown. So yeah, I will tweet out some more details about that a little bit later if you're interested in it. That's where I'll be this Thursday. And uh, definitely come say hi if you happen to check it out. Until then, uh, we will be back here tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, as always, right here on Twitch. Uh, I'd love to see you back here when we will go through. And yeah, um, I guess I, I, I think I want to... We'll maybe save the sound stuff for a little bit later, like I was saying. We'll probably go do the Win32 code necessary to load the files uh, so we don't have to hard code it like we're doing now. So we can just kind of finish that up and, and call that nice and done. Uh, and then we'll be good to go and we can, you know, sort of look at, look at some of the other stuff. So we'll be doing that tomorrow. Hope to see you back here. Uh, until then, have fun coding. And I will see you guys out there on the internet at large. Take it easy, everyone.